previous video, I provided a, a brief example on how you can visualize a two-dimensional array and its values as a grid in Python using Matplotlib. And this was meant as a starting point for getting into the area of agent-based simulation. Um, in this video, I will be modeling in an agent-based model, and in upcoming videos, we will be using that model to conduct some simulation runs to adjust some parameters and to basically see um, what the outcome of certain parameter adjustments will be on the outcome of our simulation runs. So we will be using this model in upcoming videos to conduct simulation studies. And the idea is to make a model that has a battlefield as a two-dimensional array or a two-dimensional grid. On this battlefield, two groups of agents will be randomly located. Um, and each agent has a life score and throughout the simulation runs, those two groups of agents will be battling against each other. And we then want to see what kind of parameter adjustments have an effect of the battle outcome. The first thing I'm doing is I'm defining an, a class which represents the data type of an agent. Each agent has a, a life score, which is 100 to start with. It has a X and Y coordinate, which is basically the cell within which the agent is located. And each agent also has a group attribute. Next thing I'm doing is I'm creating my battlefield grid using list comprehension in Python. So this is one list comprehension within another list comprehension. And this will be a grid with 100 rows and 100 columns. Each cell will, by default, contain the value none. And in the remaining coding example, I will now populate this battlefield such that none represents an empty cell and a populated cell will either contain an agent of group A or group B. So in order to do this, the first thing I'm doing is I'm copying my battlefield using the copy method, which basically copies this battlefield without um, accessing the reference or passing on the reference. So if I'm adjusting locations here, this list, it will not have an effect on the battlefield list. Next, I'm creating two empty lists, which will be used for storing the object reference handlers for agents of either group A or group B. So all the agents will be stored as objects to either this um, first list for agents of type A or the other list for agents of type B. I'm also importing random since I want to allocate agents to randomly selected cells, provided that the respective cell is available, meaning that the respective cell is empty. Um, and I'm creating here an, a helper method or helper function, which will be used for creating the groups of agents. A group has a defined size, so this is one parameter. It also has a group name, that's the second parameter. The third parameter is the reference to the list within which all the objects of the agents will be stored. So this will be either the parameter value agents A or agents B, which will be passed on to this parameter such that the function has a reference to which it can store all the objects that will be created within the function. The function also takes a reference to the battlefield itself. So this will be used for storing or allocating the agents on the battlefield. And then it has two additional parameters which represent basically the upper limit of the x and y coordinate. The function itself loops through all the agents to be created and for each agent, it will conduct a while loop, which is an endless loop, um, meaning that it will, iteration by iteration, try to create a random set of coordinates, and it will then check whether this cell represented by this set of coordinates is still empty. If this is the case, it means that the next agent can be allocated within the cell. The agent will be created by using the constructor of the agent class and the agent will be appended to the group list. Once this is done, um, the break operation is conducted, meaning that this 
while loop is exited and we will enter the next for loop iteration. So in this way I can use this function to create all agents within a certain group. Next thing is I'm using those two or I'm using this function to create the two groups. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm creating agent group A. You can see here it will have 1000 uh, 1, agents. They will have the name A, so this group has the name A. The group list is the empty list um, here, so this will be populated with all the agent objects. Um, the field is the battlefield itself, and the upper limit for the x and y coordinate is 100. And the same is done for the group B. So once I've conducted or executed those two um, function calls, I will have created two groups of agents and I will also have allocated the agents on the battlefield grid. The remaining code down here is basically um, visualizing the grid and um, creating a customized color mapping. So this is basically already what I showed uh, you in the previous video. So the core functionality is that I'm using the imshow method from PyPlot to visualize the grid with the cells. Um, and I'm assigning colors to the cell values. So empty cells will have the color light gray. Cells populated with an agent of type A will be colored in green and cells with an agent of type B will be colored in blue. And this is the final um, outcome of this, um, these lines of code. So this is the battlefield to start with and we can now in upcoming videos use this model to um, conduct simulation runs. For each simulation run we can for example plot an updated um, grid plot to show the current state of um, agents that are still alive or something like this. Um, so this is something we're going to look at in upcoming videos but I hope you, you got an idea of um, how you can build a very simple agent based model and how you can also use these grid, um, grid plots in Matplotlib to visualize your agent based model. In the description of the video you can also find a link to the coding example on my blog.